Well, it was always going to happen. Eventually, you cannot get away with it. And today, we're going to talk about star ratings. You can pick Dave Meltzer. You can pick whoever the flub you want. That's not really the point here. Although, I am going to use the Wrestling Observer's latest star ratings just to make my point, and we can go from there. Because the main point to all of this is that a star rating should just be considered an opinion. That's it. It doesn't matter where it comes from. It doesn't matter where it goes. It could be Cotton Eye Joe coming up with these kind of things. And you should just read it. And I love the fact that they can trigger a discourse, right? One thing I miss from at the moment mostly because of wrestling twitter is a really interesting discussion or discourse about things that go on in professional wrestling some things you're gonna like some things you're not gonna like and you just go from there the most recent one we talked about it yesterday was will osprey and cole fletcher winning a tag team tournament essentially and would it have been better to actually focus on a tag team some people told me i was wrong some people told me i agree with you and then somebody called me a bald a-hole and it all falls down now dave Meltzer is the most popular of the star ratings guys just because he's been doing it the longest and he does have a reputation in the field it would be the same for any kind of entertainment i'm sure there are people's movies reviews you read or book reviews or music reviews or whatever it may be some people like it some people don't like it and of course if you're a detractor you're especially <laughs> going to watch it and read it because you want to get mad about it so you could watch a i don't know let's say cody rhodes and roman reigns from wrestlemania 40 you could watch that i think it's the worst thing you'd ever saw and even if Meltzer gives it one out of five you're like oh man boo, you don't know what you're talking about because you've already made your mind up before you get in there and i kind of think that it's out of control to be completely honest with you and it's something that probably we need to keep an eye on otherwise where does it end right where does it end there is no right or wrong when it comes to professional wrestling there is no greatest wrestler of all time there is no greatest match of all time it actually ties into the kevin kevin nash and logan paul stuff from the other day which somebody did ask me to comment on so i'll do it within this video and they said to me who do you think is right and because I can be annoying, I say, well, I tell you, it depends on how you approach professional wrestling. If you like big dudes just smashing fools, you're going to agree with Kevin Nash. And if you like the more modern day flippy dippy doodah, you're going to side with Logan Paul about who was better in terms of being in the ring. And it's the same with anything. It's why actually what irks me the most when it does come to discourse is people saying X wrestler is most definitely better than Y. Yes, for you. But what if somebody wants to watch a funny wrestling match? What if somebody wants to watch a serious wrestling match? What if somebody wants to watch an emotional wrestling match right somebody could tell me that their favorite wrestler was santina morella and i would totally understand because that dude was entertaining as hell and if you watch wrestling just to be entertained that's why pro wrestling is so great because it can be one and many things now of course if we're focusing on sort of a super intense matchup you're going to pick somebody else if you just like it because of box office draws or someone being larger than life you're going to pick somebody else now i'm not saying that you shouldn't have a favorite wrestler or that we shouldn't do these lists or that we shouldn't have these chats we should but there is no definitive answer and it's the same with Star rating. It's all wrong. And it's all right, depending on what you thought. Also, people forget that it has to be from an emotional place. Because if you watched All Out, because we're going to talk about that today, and you were in a mood, you're going to like it less. And if you go back to it in a couple of days when you're feeling happy, you're going to like it more. Because I'm very sorry to report this. You're a human being and you always have some level of bias. You can't help it. It's like, let's say that, let's pick somebody random. Kenny Omega is your favorite wrestler ever. If he has a stinker, I shouldn't have picked Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega doesn't have stinkers. But if Kenny Omega has a stinker for him you probably won't see all the little foibles because kenny is your favorite and you are going to root for him essentially what i'm saying is every single wrestler is your mother you just love them regardless now i'm not going to go through all of them because it's a bit too much but mgf daniel garcia got four and a half stars the tag team title match got four stars and then we get to the will osprey pack match which got five and a half stars now the reason will osprey is able to wind everybody up is i do believe now he has more five star matches courtesy of Del Ma dave Meltzer, than something like like WWE, TNA, and ECW combined, right? So let's just focus on WWE. Will Ospreay has more five-star matches from Dave Meltzer than WWE combined. Now, if you're a WWE fan, you're having a meltdown right now. Here's the thing, though. You ain't Dave Meltzer. If you listen to Dave Meltzer, you will slowly realize, oh, this guy likes Japanese wrestling. That's his thing. That's where he finds himself falling. I suppose when he's bored, he just wants to watch a wrestling match. And given that, I suppose, Will Ospreay was the best New Japan wrestler when he was there, I think that's fair to say, the fact he's now in AEW and a Western promotion, it's not going to change anything. Dave has already made up his mind to this guy and probably already decided he is one of the best wrestlers ever. So when he watches Will Ospreay, he's going to give it five, six, seven, eight, nine stars. I actually think we can bring Kenny Omega back into this information, this conversation, excuse me, because he, when he was doing his streams, when he was recovering from his diverticulitis, 
Sanders and hope he's doing better. He even said he thinks there's too many five-star matches because you cannot base it just what happens in the ring. You have to look at the promos. You have to look at the build. You have to look at the story because that's what professional wrestling is and all has to come together. So let's take the Will Ospreay versus Pac match. I absolutely loved it. Do you know why I loved it, though? Because I'm obsessed with Pac, right? <laughs> I've been watching Pac for like 20 years or whatever it's been. So to see him on such a platform and having such an incredible showcase, it meant the world to me. And most people walked away saying, wow, that was an incredible match. If you like the modern style of wrestling, right? There's the caveat. If you just wanted to watch two big dudes run into each other, I totally understand that you wouldn't have liked that. Maybe you prefer the WWE style because WWE has a style and that's great. I want WWE to have a style and I want AEW to be more open to bring more styles in. You need all of this. And I suppose we have to bring Julia back into the conversation because that's something else that people are saying. Oh, she'll never be able to be any good because she can't be as stiff as she was in Stardom or Mary Girl. Why don't we give her a chance and see? It's true. Plenty of people have walked through the WWE door and maybe not hit the plateaus or the heights that people expect them to. I think Ricochet would be a good example. Ricochet had an amazing WWE career. He really did. But I think some people thought he was going to be the world champion and he never really clicked in the way, especially because when he was there, Vince McMahon had a certain way or a certain vision of what he wanted wrestling to be and Ricochet didn't tick every single one of those boxes. But if Ricochet did tick every single one of those boxes, he wouldn't be Ricochet. And sometimes it's your flaws that make you so interesting. So the fact he gave 5.5 stars to Will Ospreay versus Pac... Big whoop. If you agree with it, great. If you think there's too many five-star matches and it's ruining his system, stop ruining the system, right? This is the thing. You're allowed to look at it and go, well, I really used to enjoy Dave Meltzer's star, star ratings, but now I kind of feel like the way that he's approaching wrestling doesn't fit the way I approach wrestling. Go find somebody else. The coolest thing about 2024, they don't have the experience that Dave has or the historical knowledge. I mean, that dude is just a walking book. It's ridiculous. But there are so many content creators or podcasts or influencers like myself, but I wouldn't agree with anything that I say. I don't know what I'm talking about, but they may be more to your taste. So if you're actually just looking for a little bit of backing up about how you felt about a match, you can seek them out too. And don't forget another reason. I mean, he did do good work as well, but another reason Meltzer got to where he is is he was first. He was through, or at least one of the first and he stood the test of time. So you do get put into that legendary category. It's the same with all sports, all entertainments. You're always going to have this person. Now, the other debate people were having, let me just get it up here. Is that the Willow Nightingale Chris Statlander match got four and three quarters, which was the same score as the AEW World Title match between Brian Danielson and Jack Perry. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if I was going to start doing five star or rating matches, I would give Chris and Willow five stars. I wouldn't break five stars. I do think that's ridiculous. I do think you need to have a system, but again, that's my opinion. And I suppose randomly, I would give Jack Perry and Brian Danielson maybe like a 3.75. And that's no disrespect to them. I am just looking at it from my enjoyment levels. And I thought that street fight was one of the best street fights I've seen in a long ass time. Plus it had build, plus it had story because these two broke up and Stokely Hathaway got involved and there was a friendship there. Whereas while Brian and Jack Perry had a really, really good match in the ring, it was only a two week build. I know it goes back to Anarchy in the Arena or Blood and Guts, whatever the hell Jack Perry pinned Brian Danielson. But we kind of pivoted back to that. It wasn't this drip feeding thing. Whereas with Chris and Willow, it's basically been going on for four months, whatever the timeline is. I don't know. So that's one of the reasons I enjoyed it more because when well, a nightingale still can't believe it did smash <laughs> <laughs> Chris Statlander with a flipping light tube. I'm like, right, I understand why you would do that because this person stole a piece of your heart so that you're going to literally steal a piece of her brain. But that's just how I operate when it comes to wrestling. And I just think that there is a problem overall, not necessarily with star ratings, but with wrestling online content overall, where it just becomes an argument now. You can't say anything without someone saying, well, you didn't watch and you didn't do this. You do know you're allowed to have an opinion even if you didn't watch. Your opinion has to be ranked lower than somebody that did watch because your information is third hand but you can still get the headlines and go you know what i've got a thought process about this and i'm going to put it out there on the internet but people melt down about these all of the time and i think that's good i actually do i think that's uh having an emotional response to anything is great but it always goes too far and it always tips over the edge these things don't need to ruin your life and if you are that passionate about it start your own website start your own youtube channel start your own podcast you'll be saying oh well there's too many of them but you don't know what kind of audience that you're going to get that's like saying well why would we bother coming up 
with a brand new sport for the Olympics. No one's going to care, but we do. We find things and we put them in there and we hope that it develops an audience. But I just find it a little bit crazy. I don't really need to make this video if we're completely honest, but here I am sat on a Friday and you just see all these barbs coming in. People say, this is terrible. This is ruining professional wrestling. It doesn't matter. And the wrestlers themselves don't care. I'm sure Will Ospreay feels great that he does get this. It's a nice, you know, feather in his cap and he should be proud of it. But he's even gone out there and said, well, they are what they are and I don't really worry about it that much because it's not a big deal. What matters to me is, you know, bringing the fans in and entertaining the fans and doing good for AEW. He gets it too. Kenny Omega has said that. People in WWE have said that. Now, I think the other sort of caveat, to, not caveat, the point to this is, oh, Kurt Angle never had a five-star match. It's fine. Dave was wrong. There you go. Done. Kurt Angle should have had a five-star match, but that's his system. So it doesn't matter. And I don't like it when people actually go to wrestle. Oh, you never got this. Yes, but they know. Kurt Angle is one of the best wrestlers of all time, whether he got one five-star match or 722 five-star matches. I mean, I've literally gone through the Attitude Era recently for like the 10th millionth time for some videos that we're doing. And he is one of the best of all time. You can tell because from 1999 to 2000, he's already become the champion, even though he's just debuted. He understands his character. He understands his promos. He's happy to laugh at himself. And then he gets in the ring and he's an absolute machine and he's an absolute tank. And you don't need anyone throwing some damn gold shapes at you to let you know that. But at the same time, you're allowed to watch Kurt Angle and go, you know what? I don't get it. It's lost on me because maybe you just wanted to see, I don't know, Goldberg. And that's fine too, right? All of these things are perfectly cool. I would love to get back to the point where all of this can just be on the table because then you can dissect it and you can break it down like Degeneration X. Because I would love to know why Goldberg is your guy. I would love to know why somebody loved Jerry Lynn. Why did you love Dean Malenko? Why did you love Berlin, the former Alex Wright? I miss that guy. He used to do a stupid dance and he entertained me. And look, I didn't see that many Alex Wright matches back in the day, but I remember him. So surely he has to be somewhere on a list when it comes to professional wrestlers that made their impact in professional wrestling land. So I never think that we need to overthink these things. I mean, the main event, the crazy cage match got four and a half stars. And then people say, well, Dave Veltzer doesn't even like those crazy fights. Okay, so he's reviewing it with a very specific set of rules, I suppose. I mean, the mercedes Monet match got two, two and a three quarter stars. There was a few problems in that, like Shida missed a few knees and the kendo stick spot didn't make sense. I didn't understand why we sent Camille away. To me, it was a very, very well fought wrestling match. And it reminded me that mercedes Monet is a pretty damn good wrestler. That was my takeaway. I have no idea what kind of stars that I would throw on it. And listen, if you want... <laughs> I will do breakdown of reviews and do star ratings after pay-per-views, but I won't because I'll give that up because it's just not worth it. But if it really is bothering you, just think you need to take a little bit of a breath and remember it doesn't matter. Your opinion is as important as anybody else's, no matter what kind of platform or what kind of say they have. It's true. Like it just is. And I'm sure that if you did a tweet today to, I don't know, let's think of a random wrestler who's not the top of the card, Austin Theory. If you sent a message to Austin Theory today on that Twitter or whatever saying, man, I love you. You're my favorite wrestler. He would probably see that. Or if he did see that, he'd probably like it and it would probably make his day. Doesn't matter that you're just Brian from down the road. Makes no difference at the same time if Dave Meltzer gives him one star and says you're crap he's probably gonna feel quite sad about that that's because he's a human being it doesn't come down to anything else so I find it nuts I find it crazy I do probably think that a lot of it is disingenuous and a lot of it is faux rage which unfortunately is just what the internet wrestling community has become in those little niches but the niches are always the loudest so you know just you know, debate and talk and listen and hear and respond and all those things. But remember, it is professional wrestling, which is the most important of the least important things. And just for fun, I will give the main event from All Out. Well, actually, I'd probably give it minus five stars because I was dead by the end of it. I was crying. It's a tissue. It's like, oh, I killed him. He absolutely can. I want to see murder on my television, but it's not true. With the build and with the characters that they had presented, it actually heightened my experience. Like if I was booking a promotion, I would never book that match because I'm too much of a wimp. But given that it was presented to me in the way that it was, and again, the characters are so compelling, I probably would give it a really good score because Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page have entered this weird sphere that they have kind of made all of their own. And I think that is absolutely badass. Same with Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns did what they did at WrestleMania 40. One of my favorite matches in the year. It's barely a match for half of it. It's just people turning up. That's all it is. But that is what I wanted. I wanted it to be silly. I wanted it to be over the top. And I just wanted to go on an emotional roller coaster, which I got. And then Cody Rhodes wins. Sometimes you can have the crappiest match ever. But if the outcome is what you want it to be, Cody Rhodes finishing his story, the rest, poof, 
it vanishes into dust. Which again, the same thing that happened on Dynamite. People only talked about Will Ospreay and Carl Fletcher. They didn't talk about any of the good stuff that AEW had done because it's a lasting impression. And lasting impressions are really important. Look at Mass Effect 3. If you haven't played it, I won't spoil it, but it ends with a ghost kid and no one knew what to do and then buy away when it changed the ending. That's the best way to end this video. I'm not going to be able to beat it, but please do like the video, share the video and subscribe. Just interact with the video as much as you can. There will be a video on the screen. Click it, which me talking about professional wrestling. Otherwise, grillamind.com for us Simon. You get Simon get 10% off. I rate these. I promise you they will help you in your fitness journey. Patreon.com for us Simon316. Simon316 on 316. Simon316 on all social media. Simon J. Miller on TikTok. Simon Miller on Cameo and Pro Wrestling. Tease.com for us Simon Miller. Brand new Wrestlers Commit Crimes t-shirts out now. So make sure you get one of those. Otherwise, I'll see you.